Hi, I'm Rob Washburn, Red Hat Consulting Architect, and this is Corey McKee, Red Hat Senior Consultant, and thanks for tuning in to our whiteboarding sessions. Today we're actually going to talk about Satellite 6, high availability and load balancing. So, Corey, Satellite 5 compared to Satellite 6. Satellite 5 didn't have a very modular architecture, Satellite 6 does, and uh, that aspect of Satellite 6 actually allows us to do some really cool things like implementing high availability and load balancing across real clients without having to involve things like clustering. So what that does mean though is that there are more moving parts to account for as part of a Satellite 6 deployment. So uh, Corey, could we actually take what we've illustrated up here on the whiteboard and take it from the top and explain what each of the pieces are? Yes, this is the integrated satellite capsule, okay. remote capsules, and the load balancers and rail client servers. Okay. So uh, you said capsule and capsule. Is there a difference between what's up here and then these other four pieces? Yes, this is uh, the management head, which is an all-in-one capsule server, okay. where you manage everything from that. Okay, and then what are these called? Remote capsules. Okay. All right, and then um, as far as what we've basically uh, uh, written out here on the whiteboard, what's the difference between this side uh, of uh, the picture and this side? These are two different domains. One's a non-prod domain dev, and one is a prod domain. Okay. Um, in most instances, the client does not want uh, the non-prod to touch production. Okay. So that's cool, and that's a you know very frequently encountered circumstance that we see with customers in the field. Is there anything that we can do to expand this? So if a customer has more than maybe two environments? Yes, we can actually add more capsules or load balancers based upon the geo. Okay. It could be geolocations or even different uh, separate network segments. Okay, so actually if we're moving into a multi-site, multi-geospace with Satellite 6, do each of those remote sites need to be managed individually or? Uh... No, they all be managed from the satellite head. Fantastic. Okay, so um, as far as deploying each of these pieces, like let's just say the customer starts out with a clean environment, what would you start with moving on to the next piece? Yes, I would start that? with installing the uh, management head, okay. satellite server, then I would install the remote capsule servers. Okay. And then, um, Depends on who, who, what environment it is, the load balancers. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit more about these capsules? So are they, are they appliances or are they just rail servers? They're rail servers, which we run as uh, install script that would automatically register them as capsule servers in the satellite server. All right. Um, while we're in the process of illustrating how all of this like, works, can we um, depict the network relationships between yes, each of the Yes, the pieces? satellite server, the capsule servers will be touched here. Okay. And then from the, the load balancers that we connected here. All right. And there's the uh, load balancer to the rail systems. Okay. So I see that the remote capsules, cap one, two, three, and four, they're all directly communicating with and controlled by the satellite yes. six management head. What's the relationship between the satellite six management head and these content capsule, dad dev and prod load balancer? So those names? when configuring the load balancer, you've got to configure it to a virtual capsule. So it'll be connected, satellite will be connected to these directly. Okay. And the relationship, like as far as like direct communication between the rel managed servers and virtual machines and the management head? They all go through the load balancer. They okay. do not go talk directly to the satellite server. Cool. All right, so how do we add more provisioning capacity to the so satellite? So we would deploy uh, another capsule server. Okay. For this instance, we would deploy cap five. and add it to the load balancer. Very cool. So when this is actually deployed and it's working, what happens? Like, is there anything else that needs to be done to, for the load balancer to pick up this new capsule and start? So it'll be integrated it? into, uh, you gotta add the IP address of the cap five into the load balancer. Okay. And at that point in time, the, the rel clients will automatically run Rob into the cap five. Okay, so for example, if we're deploying three servers, what would the, like, the provisioning relationship or deployment? So relationship if we're deploying deploy? three servers, the first server will go to cap three, second server will go to cap four, and the third will go to cap five. Fantastic. And then since this is prod and folks don't like making major changes in prod without um, uh, outage windows, is that something that we need in order to be able to add capacity to production? No, we just it'll be on the fly. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. So now here's the other half of that coin. Well, what if something happens in the environment and the virtual machine or the physical server that's handled by cap three goes down? So if cap three goes to goes down, everything gets routed to cap four and cap, cap five, right. and the clients won't know if we lost a cap, capsule server. Fantastic. So there you have it. 
We have Satellite 6 using the modular uh, capsule architecture through integration with load balancer providing active active load balancing and high availability failover. Um, thanks again for tuning in um, to our whiteboard session. If you're actually looking at um, getting some help with deploying something similar to this, please talk to your Red Hat account executive and schedule a discovery session. We can talk about what Red Hat Consulting brings to the table and help you out. Uh, alternatively, you can just go to redhat.com slash consulting and uh, ask to speak directly to a resource. Thank you so much.